This video was made as part of the We Collaborate ADU Back to School Edition collaboration with some other educational YouTube channels, whose videos you should definitely watch after this one. Lots of people have complained about the school systems, especially here in the United States, especially those who have been through the U.S. public school system. But what exactly is going on that makes school such an unenjoyable experience? School being bad and or boring is, of course, more than just a minor issue because schools are where we teach our kids vital, important life skills to carry on our legacies and further the development of human civilization into the future. So it's kind of important we get this right. So what are some of the problems in the school system? To be clear, I will be referring more to the United States school system. Some of the main problems can be boiled down to outdated practices, too much work and stress, and overgeneralization, like being group by age, not ability, and everyone being taught the same subjects in the same amount. The latter is especially harmful. Prince EA points out how if a doctor gave the same prescription to everyone, the results would be tragic. And yet this is how we treat our students, whose minds aren't any more similar than their bodies and their immune systems. Every student is unique, like judging a fish and a monkey on their ability to climb trees and swim. Neither of them will exceed in both necessarily, but each will have their own strength, which is probably the worst thing we miss in students. One student will excel in history and work at the Smithsonian, and another in math and will be very good to work at NASA. Yet, we still force both of them to learn the same amount of both. It seems that a student's life has to revolve around schoolwork and homework, given how much of both is given, which can dig into time that can be spent in a different, dare I say, better place. Sure, homework can help retain information by helping practice, However, students, and teachers for that matter, have lives to live outside of academics. But when students have to complete stacks of work that they can't possibly finish without sacrificing social life, that can tear apart another thing school should be meant to help with, like essential life and social skills. The latter can't necessarily form through homework. Unlike when the Battle of Hastings took place, why leaves are green, or how to solve this math problem, Everyone will be paying taxes, living somewhere, preparing food for themselves, and other life tasks that most public schools don't necessarily teach you how to do properly, if at all. School systems here also mainly reflect industrial age factory worker values, and haven't really been updated in the past 150 years or so. Physics courses, for example, aren't mandated to cover discoveries made after 1865. Einstein was born in 1879. Even though society is completely different today from just 20 years ago, so if schools do prepare you properly for life, it's more likely for the industrial age. Additionally, some could say that the key to life is functional autonomy, the ability to survive and thrive on one's own without need to look at the instructions, which is difficult to learn or practice in the full of instructions, tightly controlled environment of the classroom. With all these complaints about too hard yet inadequate work that fails to teach essential life skills that some parents can't actually provide for their own kids, there has to be another way. So how are things done in Finland? Finland's education system is widely hailed as the best in the world, like actually number one. While we can barely even locate Finland, it's right here by the way, Finland excels as if answering most of the concerns I pointed out in this video specifically. First, collaboration, like what this video is. American students and school districts compete with each other needlessly, while Finnish students are encouraged to collaborate and build on each other's ideas, like is required in the years beyond the 1860s. The modern workplace is more about ingenuity, ideas, and collaboration. Finnish students also have more free time, way less homework, and don't take standardized tests. Okay, so maybe you're not convinced. Maybe you're still convinced that more is more. After all, it didn't really make sense to me at first to give less homework and expect more of a yield. It's not that the Finnish system gives too little work and study, it's that the American system gives too much. But unfortunately, all the peer pressure of having too much homework to turn in and facts to try to memorize and spit out the next day kind of makes all the late night studying many participate in kind of worthless. As even after just a few days, many of the facts aren't actually retained. You've probably been there, awake past 3am studying for a crucial test in a class on a subject too poorly explained for all the facts to be properly retained for tests. And you come to barely remember the information and if you fail the test, you're essentially treated like a failure. The worst part is that students rarely maintain the facts they may learn. 
and end up thinking of school as the place you go to waste your time while your soul slowly drips out a year, which is, at the bottom line, horrible. School is meant to prepare students for the outside world, yet another complaint about the school system is that it doesn't. It's worse than enforcing calculus into uninterested students who can't also retain information about most mathematics, but are much better with the sciences and social studies, I'm kind of describing myself here. But what about all those aforementioned life skills, like cooking, or taxes, starting your own business, renting, sexual education, saving mannequin's life, or even personal hygiene? Why well, shouldn't that be a class? Another thing that should be done is adjusting the lesson format. Even if we keep our current lecture format, we can still make it so that the lessons are slower and more tuned to what the students actually need. Which isn't the raw information, but the knowledge connecting the information. Put it this way, which is a better way to teach history? The usual way proposed of memorizing random dates and facts, or lining them up into meaningful patterns and showing meaningful lines into how this event directly and logically affected this event. For example, you can draw a line between the construction of the Great Wall of China and how it indirectly led to the Protestant Reformation. Those may seem like random examples, but there is a direct logical correlation between the two. The connection is the plague, just a hint. I'll let you decide on the answer, but that does sound a great video for next week. Collaboration is very important, which is why this video is part of the We Collaborate EDU Back to School Edition collaboration, to which I have linked the playlist with a whole bunch of other back to school related videos from other educational channels here. Be sure to wait and tell me what you thought of this video, and subscribe to learn more every Sunday if you like this channel.